Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. I make videos on career, education, and lifestyle. So today's video is going to give you an application checklist of things that you need as you're considering applying to a master's in business analytics program. This can also be a similar checklist that you need for an MBA program or a master's in management program. Generally for business school, these are the types of things that you need as you consider applying. I hope that this is useful to you. If anything, it'll give you a heads up on what you need when you're applying so that you can get a bit of a head start. Okay, the first thing that you generally need to complete is your bachelor's degree. I do wanna note that I don't necessarily accept three years uh, bachelor's degrees. I know that a few people have been wondering and usually schools don't accept it. You might find a school or two that will, so do some research, but you generally need a degree from a four-year master's program. Now, you can usually apply with just your unofficial transcript. When you're applying, you don't necessarily need to send it to the school right away always, so you can put your unofficial transcript on the application form and then if you do get admitted, they will request the official transcripts and then you'll have to send it in from your university. So the first thing that you need is a degree for your degree and with that comes a transcript. If you haven't finished your degree yet, that's totally fine. Uh, as long as it's in progress and you're expected to finish before the program starts, usually that should be totally fine. All right, the second thing that you need are some prerequisite courses. Now, a lot of schools require that you complete your Calculus One program as well as your statistics. Usually, schools also require you to take some sort of programming class. Now this can be your basic intro to programming class or if you took a specific class on Python or R, uh, that's usually very helpful as well. Otherwise, they will recommend you to take a course uh, in DataCamp or some of the other online platforms where you can take a course just to get some of the fundamentals. The third thing that you need are letters of recommendation. Now, I <laughs> want to make you aware of this because you need to have relationships with either your professors or colleagues to be able to obtain this and that can take some time. Some schools just require you to submit the names of your recommenders but they might just reach out to them if they have questions and they don't really need a letter up front. So there's varying degrees of requirement but you usually need two letters of recommendation. Uh, if you have professional experience, this can be a colleague or a manager although you might have to tow a sensitive line as you might be leaving to pursue this program, right? So that's your call. If you're a student, you could ask your professors. So if you are asking professors, I'd recommend that you have one professor that can speak to your technical abilities and another professor that can speak to your, maybe your character, how you act in the class, just your general demeanor and your drive. So you can mix it up so that you can show different aspects of your strengths and personality. All right, the fourth thing that you will generally need is your resume. Every school that I applied to required that I upload a resume. And I really suggest that you don't just follow any random format as you're formatting your resume. There is generally a standard format that you need to follow. I might link a couple links in the description below for you to check out to put your resume together. But generally, you can do your education, you can do any professional experience that you have. I would also list any leadership awards or leadership activities that you've been involved in. And then I would also have a section for your technical competencies that you have. So definitely make sure that you follow a standard resume format there should never be a picture of you on the resume for instance or crazy bold colors generally you want to keep it pretty standard because tracking system can automatically read in some resumes and you don't want to get flagged necessarily there's a way to do your resume and i would suggest that you follow that format it should be pretty self-explanatory the fifth thing that you need is your statement of purpose now this should generally tell a story of why you're interested in pursuing your master's in business analytics. I would weave a very interesting story, right, that talks about your interests, things that you can't necessarily do without this degree, right? Like what is the urgency? Why do you need to get the degree now? That's kind of the things that you need to mention in your statement of purpose. By reading this, the school should be convinced that you are interested in the program 
that you have the skills and experiences for the program and they need to have a clear statement of what you're going to do with this degree. If you do get it, what's next, right? So you need to have a very clear picture in mind when you're creating your statement of purpose. Make it sound interesting, make it a story about you and this is really where you can let your personality shine. All right, the sixth thing that you need is your GMAT or GRE. So I took the GRE, you can take the GMAT, it really doesn't matter. Schools generally don't say that they prefer one over the other. A lot of business schools are pretty flexible. I recommend that you take it more than once unless you get a perfect score the first time because generally the first time you'll have a few nerves and by the second time you know what to expect and you can really perform your best. Generally every school has a di different requirement um, of the minimum score that they require but usually they'll have a range that they consider. So if you don't have a strong GMAT or GRE I would recommend that you try really hard to get a high GPA or show very relevant experience. You need to basically convey that you're a strong applicant in other ways so please don't stress out if you don't perform the best in standardized testing usually um, but make sure that you have other aspects of your application that are strong i will add to this also if you're an international student you might also need to take your toefl or ielts all right the seventh thing that you need is your application fee you can generally get this waived if you talk to someone in admissions attend a webinar there's a lot of ways to get this free, so definitely make use of resources, reduce your costs because the whole journey can get pretty expensive. The last point I'll make is about interviewing. Sometimes you will be required to attend an interview for programs. So I actually did serve as an interviewer. I can maybe make a whole another video giving tips of things to do and not to do when it comes to your interview. So I'll save that, but definitely note that you might be required to have an interview. So brush up on why you want to join the program, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, just those general questions. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that this gave you an idea of the general application checklist that you need to have as you're applying to different master's programs. Thank you so much for watching. Please take a second to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.